When I was a little kid, I thought that people did bad things because they were in cahoots with the devil. That's what I thought. And then when I got a little older, I said, oh, that's crazy. They, no, it's not because they're in cahoots with the devil. No, it's, the devil doesn't, he doesn't even exist. And it's just the people are just following their own individual choices and exercising their autonomy. And, and then when I got a little bit older still, I realized, no, they just do bad things because they're in cahoots with the devil. It's amazing how you go, you go right back to where you were. You had it right the first time, actually. So my producers found these videos on TikTok. There were videos of people making pro-abortion arguments because that's the hottest topic around right now. So hot right now. That is the central issue of debate in the United States. And they, they did it, they kind of said the quiet part out loud when it comes to the devil and the evil and all the spiritual components. So I am now tasked with figuring out which one of these pro-abortion advocates is the most explicitly satanic. Abortion. Genocide. This video is brought to you by Ring. More from Ring in just a second. First, though, let's get to the Satanists. We have a big win for the pro choice community right now. As of this week, abortions are protected by religious liberty laws for Satanists. And this is due to the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. This act ensures that the interests in religious freedom are protected. You might be wondering why these all tie in together, but let me tell you. Satanists now have an abortion ritual. Feel free to pause and read, but it basically sanctifies the abortion process by instilling confidence and protecting bodily autonomy rights when undergoing the safe and scientific procedure. So the following requirements cannot be forced on Satanists. and any abortions in the first trimester we are allowed to obtain. There's also this form that you can print off and submit to ensure that your rights are protected. In addition to those, there are some affirmations that you do with the rituals as well that basically just help you be empowered in yourself, and you can look those up on the website. Thyself is thy master, and hail Satan. Hail Satan! Okay, so this, this gal, like all people who have ever gotten in cahoots with the devil, thinks that she's being really clever. It's like I have ESPN or something. And she says, well, I want to, there to be legal abortion, and ne- they want to get rid of legal abortion, but I'm going to claim there's a religious liberty right to legal abortion. Yes, see, because of religious liberty in here, I'm going to be able to avoid pro-life laws because the Satanists, oh yeah, could you believe what a strange coincidence, the Satanists are actually now supporting abortion. What a, isn't that a wild coincidence? This girl seems to think that she's stumbled on a, a kind of wild, quirky little, isn't that so strange? It's not strange at all. It's not strange at all. And even there, she says, look, I, I'm all about Satanism because that just means doing what you want. The Satanism doesn't mean you really think there's a little red guy with horns and a, and a spear or anything like that. No, it just means doing whatever you want to do and, uh, you know, pursuing your own desires. Yeah, that's what it always meant. That's what it always meant. And don't you think it's a little strange that you, who you think you're just exercising your own liberal totally rationalistic, enlightened free will. Don't you think it's a little weird that it always just leads you right back to doing all the same weird devil worship stuff that people have been doing for thousands of years? Isn't that, doesn't that give you a little bit of pause? I guess not her. Okay, next one up. The satanic temple wants to ensure you can still get an abortion. With the possibility of Roe versus Wade being overturned, the satanic temple want to use the RFRA to make sure its members can still perform abortion rituals, which if you're wondering, is just a normal abortion. They might also open abortion clinics. The RFRA essentially defines protections for the freedom of religion in the United States. If the Christian church can force pro-life law, why can't the satanic temple do the opposite? Uh, Well, for a few reasons. Uh, One, there's more of us than there are of them, and this is self-government, and we have some say over how we run our country. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Uh, Two, we have legal protections, and... I think constitutional protections to protect life. We don't have any constitutional protections, no no real constitutional protections uh, for killing little babies. And three, because there's a difference between good and evil. There's a difference between God and the devil. And we should pursue the good and avoid evil. We seem to have forgotten this in recent years where we pretend that politics is totally neutral and we can't make any distinctions. Even self-styled conservative thinkers and writers have suggested that we can never tell the difference between, say, Drag Queen Story Hour and uh, Church on Sunday, that the the public needs to be totally neutral to these two things. Uh, No. No, we actually can tell the difference, okay? And this, this was an important aspect of our country for the vast majority of our country's history. There are limits to religious liberty. The Satanists think they're being clever, 
by defining any evil action that they want as a part of their religious ritual. Well, let's take it all the way. It's actually the exact same claim that they're making here with abortion, but we'll take it in a way that will make it clearer to other people. If the satanic temple came out and said, one of our rituals is that we uh, sacrifice 16-year-old virgin girls, and we sacrifice those virgin girls to the devil, and that's our religious ritual, and therefore we have a right to do it. No one would take that argument seriously. At no point in the history of this country or any other country would that be thought to be some protected aspect of religious liberty. Unfortunately, human sacrifice has been a part of the public religion of lots of countries over the years, and and it's actually part of the kind of public religion of our country now, except instead of a 16-year-old, we're talking about a six-month-old or a three-month-old or a 10-week-old or a nine-month-old or, you know, babies that are in the womb. There are obviously limits on this. The Satanists don't have the right to do whatever they want. As far as I'm concerned, they don't have very many rights at all. You know, summer is always busy, so, uh, you know, we go on vacation, we leave the house, and we want to make sure that we're protected. We can rest easy. You can do that with Ring Alarm. You know about Ring. Ring is that amazing video doorbell where you can see and speak to whoever's at your door, whether you're in the home or outside the home or at the office. Well, Ring also has an alarm, so you can protect your entire home, the windows, the doors, everything from freeze, fire, flood, all the bad guys. Well, now you can go pro. Ring Alarm Pro is the next level security system. CNET calls Ring Alarm Pro a giant leap for home security. And after seeing this in action, I absolutely think that they are right. Ring has combined the home security system with a Wi-Fi router because you live your life in the physical world, so you got to protect that. But you live a lot of your life in the digital world. You got to protect that too, okay? With a Ring Pro subscription, which is an amazing deal, by the way, you get professional monitoring for the ultimate peace of mind. If anything happens, professional monitoring will call and request emergency services. Totally worry-free time away from the home. To learn more, go to ring.com slash Michael. All right, back to the Satanists. So today I've decided to end the abortion debate. And I'm going to start off with agreeing with you pro-lifers. So yes, life begins at conception. A fetus is a living baby and it deserves all the rights everybody else has on the face of the planet. Well, if we agree, then why are we arguing? And yet you still can't ban abortion. And here's why. It's called bodily autonomy. And bodily autonomy dictates that nobody can be forced to share or give up their body against their will even if it causes the death of another person. That means that bodily autonomy takes precedence over another person's right to live. So no, you can't be forced to give up a kidney or a liver or even your blood against your will, even if your decision causes somebody else to die. Same thing goes with women's bodies. They don't have to give up their body or their uterus or go through hours or even days of intense pain while they're literally being torn apart to let out a baby against their will. It's their body, their choice. Just because that she makes that claim doesn't make it true, <laughs> right? She says, well, what they're forgetting, you see, is that we have bodily autonomy. Uh, no, you don't. You have some bodily autonomy, but you do not have absolute bodily autonomy. You don't have a natural right. You don't have a constitutional right. You don't even have a civil right to do just anything you want with your body at any given time. Certainly not. You don't. You do not have that right. With your body, if you wanted to go on the internet and download child pornography, that's just, it's your body, right? It's your body. It's your computer. It's your autonomy. You're not allowed to do that. There are limits on what you're allowed to do. If you wanted to uh, kill yourself, if you wanted to commit suicide, you are not allowed to do that. In certain states now, they're trying to make that legal. The only reason they have to make that legal is because it's illegal, because you don't have the right to do that. You do not have total bodily autonomy. Stop breaking the law! Call! The madness of this perspective comes because, and this woman probably came by it honestly, because she's thinking of politics primarily from the standpoint of rights. Where, by the way, even if you think in this very liberal way from the standpoint of rights, her argument doesn't make sense because she's saying basically that liberty, the the freedom of the woman to do what she wants, trumps the life of the baby. That's not true. When we talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it's not like those are all on equal footing. One derives from the other. You can't pursue happiness without liberty. You can't have liberty without life. And so in a conflict between those rights, even by the the liberal framework, still life would have to trump it. But I think that's a, a dumb way to look at politics to begin with. I don't think politics is primarily about rights, whether it's your natural rights or your civil rights or your constitutional rights. I think pr- those things are important, but it's primarily about duty, obligation. 
I have obligations. I'm born not as some free-floating automaton, as some atom in, in the sky that uh, is absolutely able to do whatever I want because I have no connections to anyone. No, I'm born to a mother, to a family, in a community where I have responsibilities, where I, I have to respect people, in a nation, in, in a moral order. I have responsibilities ultimately to my God. So no, you don't You don't have the right to just do whatever you want to your body whenever you want to do it. You can make that claim that you do, but you haven't explained why that is. And you're making a claim that statistically no one has ever believed anywhere in the entire history of the world. That pretty much all of moral philosophy would say is not, not true. Okay, last one. If you have a uterus and you do not like these abortion laws, keep listening. So this is for my Americans, really. We have our Constitution rights, our First Amendment right. So the First Amendment is basically freedom of speech and freedom to practice religion. That being said, if you join the Satanic Temple, you will have control over your body. So in Satanism, they practice the seven fundamentals. Number three, if you want to read that. Basically, it means you cannot infringe on somebody's body and that if they want to do something, they have the right to do it to themselves. Here's a .org article about the satanic temple suing texas so basically all you have to do is go on to the satanic temple's website and you have to buy um, a membership thingy it's 25 dollars. this thing so as long as you have physical proof that you're part of the satanic temple you, you can do whatever you want to your body you can get an abortion even if the law say no so that, that's just not true it's a total fabrication that's one of those things like they go around social media sometimes which is you have to post this text that says that Mark Zuckerberg can't look at your pictures or else she won't be, and that's just not true. She's not making anything resembling a legally coherent argument. But she, she is raising a good point, which is on this question of religious liberty. She says the First Amendment says that you can have whatever religious practices you want, absolutely. That's not what the First Amendment says. She is implying, I think, that there is a firm separation between church and state. That's not true. That has never been true from the very beginning of our country onward. That is plucked pretty much out of thin air. Actually, what does the First Amendment say? It says that there will be no established church at the national level. Do you know why that is? Not to protect the government from the church. It's because there already were established churches at the state level. In most of the states, there were state establishments that continued for decades after the Constitution was ratified. That's why. In the United States, we've had blasphemy laws for a lot of our nation's history. You didn't have the right to blaspheme God. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. I'm sorry. Even John Locke. John Locke is the father of liberalism. We supposedly take so much of our country from John Locke. In John Locke's letter concerning toleration, John Locke says that we should tolerate everybody and give people free speech, except for atheists who should not be tolerated whatsoever and should basically just be ostracized. That's the, that's the great father of liberalism, the great proponent of freedom of religion. It's just they're making arguments that are not only philosophically inconsistent, but just completely ahistorical. They don't have any basis in the actual American or Western tradition at all. So who is the most satanic? I kind of feel bad for that last girl. I appreciated the girl, even though she does have that little devil kind of horn thing in her nose, which on a superficial level makes her probably the most satanic. Uh, I appreciated the, the British lady who talked about bodily autonomy. It's called bodily autonomy. I felt that she at least was trying to be honest. The most satanic is that first one. Thyself is thy master and hail Satan. She said, you know, the, the, only, the only commandment that there is is do what you will. One, it's incoherent because we want contrary things. For instance... If I uh, have just eaten a, a three pieces of pie and I see there's that last little slice of chocolate pie, I want to eat that pie. I, part of me wants to eat that pie, but part of me does not want to eat that pie. Part of me says, Michael, you're going to feel really bad and get fat and it's gonna, you're not, you shouldn't eat that pie. So how do, how do we do it? I, I want it and I don't want it. Well, that's because human beings have two wills. We have the lower will, which is known as the appetite. That's what animals have. Go to hell with it. And we have the rational will, which distinguishes us from the lower animals. And the rational will is the mediator between the appetite, the lower will, and the divine will, the, the, the transcendent moral order that, uh, that we all have some sense of. And so the the rational will tells us, no, don't eat that pie. That would be wrong. The rational will says, no, don't cheat on your wife. The rational will says, no, don't steal that car. No, even if part, some lower part of you wants to do that. Okay. And so when, when the Satanists say, do what you will, they're not talking about the rational will. Okay. (laughs) They're not, they're certainly not talking about the divine will. They're rejecting that. They're saying, 
just pursue all your basest appetites, whatever perversions you have, whatever uh, gluttonous lusts of your loins and stomach you have, just, just follow those things. That leads to misery. That, that does not make you a free person. Actually, the whole point of liberal education is to tamp down and tame that appetite that, that makes you the very same as, as any other animal and to cultivate the higher will. That's why we call it the liberal arts, is to cultivate freedom. And that's what true freedom is. Whereas the man who sins is a slave to sin. We used to understand that. And, and we seem to have forgotten that as a culture. Certainly on TikTok, they've forgotten that. So the first lady is the most satanic. All the rest of you, do not just do whatever you will. Do what God wills. Do what is right. Do that and you'll have a much better life and we'll have a much better society. And uh, we won't need to deal with all the kooky Satanists on TikTok. At least not as much. I'm Michael Knowles. I'll see you next time.